Hey everybody, Mike Miller, Herald Times, joined by columnist Jeremy Price after a 73-63. Yes. Almost the, the, at, at the end of the night, the game almost feels uh, secondary to everything else, <laughs> kind of wrapping up this season, uh, tying a bow on as best we can, and, and really looking into the future the next uh, few weeks and lunch, which uh, will really be instructive as to where Indiana goes from here, because uh, certainly, you know, one final time you kind of saw what this team was, uh, where it stands right now in, in year two of Archie Miller, and now obviously all as well, uh, where it absolutely needs to go uh, immediately, so uh, to really take that next step. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the game, but also uh, I think as you mentioned, just kind of uh, look at the season, um, not so much from the big picture here in the immediate aftermath of this game, but also just kind of look at where things uh, do need to go in these next few weeks, because it could be pretty interesting just uh, with potential roster turnover, yeah. uh, and, and just kind of looking at what this uh, program could uh, certainly add uh, here in the weeks to come. But um, uh, it's, it's, this is a, a weird winding season, highs and lows, uh, I uh, felt like much more of the, of the latter, uh, but um, I know what. As you kind of step away from the season, what what do you make of it? Because uh, you can go any number of ways uh, with what you saw from this team. Uh, obviously, to what it lacks, uh, what it's going to miss moving on from here. What we don't know yet, this, especially with Romeo Langford. Uh, what we think we know, um, but uh, I guess what, what do you make of this season? I know it's kind of a vague, abstract question, but what? Uh, <laughs> When you think about the 2019 Hoosiers, Archie Miller's second group, what, uh, what do you think? About them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the biggest thing is clearly the Archie Miller era is still a work in progress. If you think that this is some sort of finished product and, you know, I get this response from some people, oh, forget it, Archie Miller's no good, he doesn't know what he's doing, there's no chance of this ever working out, it's, you know, people are already, some people are already ready to move on or something. I, I don't think you can do that off of this season. I mean, the, the truth is, not to use it as an excuse, because some of the way that this team played at various times, uh, especially during that losing streak, would be unacceptable under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, this team never played with a full deck this season. I mean, we really don't know what a full roster would have looked like for this team, how it might have been constructed differently, what roles would have been played differently. Um, how guys might have been able to perform differently. And, and that doesn't go just for the, the big injuries that cost guys games, but there were just little nagging injuries, whether it was, you know, Finnessy coming back from the concussion and the lingering effects of that to, mm -hmm. you know, Al Durham had his uh, middle fingers on his left hand taped for the last, uh, I think, since what, the Iowa game maybe or something? Yeah, the Iowa game, game was here, that? right? The Iowa game here, yeah. I think, yeah. Something like that. And, you know, that's something that nobody ever discussed, nobody ever brought up. It's not something that generally we talk about, but it was clear to me that his shot was not the same after that whatever happened, jammed those fingers or whatever happened. You know, there, suddenly he developed a side rotation on his shot that wasn't there earlier in the season and things. You know, that's just a, one example. You know, mm -hmm. Zach McRoberts playing through, you know, what likely a stress fracture or some sort of foot injury uh, late in the season down the stretch just to be able to play. You know, Ron Davis obviously coming back from the Achilles and, and that's an injury that typically takes anywhere from a year to 18 months to fully recover from and that was in January of last year that that happened so he's really only 12 to 14 months out from that now I can only imagine where if he can stay healthy and get a full off season in how much better he could potentially be next fall as well so all that to say that I don't I question a little bit of how much we can take away from this. Mm -hmm. What I do think we can take away from this is that tonight Indiana played a Wichita State team that has sort of established a culture of toughness, uh, mental toughness, physical toughness, um, a winning mindset basically under Greg Marshall. And even though they didn't make the NCAA tournament this year, that's a team that's kind of found its stride late in this season, a team that right now if they were in the NCAA tournament would be you know, playing as well as anybody. They were just so bad early in the year. But they've got a ton of freshmen and sophomores playing key roles for them, not much in the way of, of upperclassmen or seniors in particular. And they came in here and won tonight. And I think that that's sort of a model for where this Indiana program wants to get to to establish that culture of, of toughness, uh, you know, defensive toughness, physical toughness, mental toughness. And that takes more than the two years that, that Archie Miller's had so far. And that's going to take a, a few more recruiting classes for Archie Miller as, as well. I mean, it's sometimes easy to forget that basically the, his first recruiting class was really Tom Crean's recruiting class. And so this year was his first recruiting class. And if Romeo Langford leaves, and then Jerome Hunter, of course, never played this year. So we don't really know, 
if he's going to be able to play next year. I mean, it's entirely possible Jerome Hunter never plays at Indiana. Mm-hmm. Now, it's entirely possible he comes back and is full go next year, but we don't know that right now. So, you know, it, it's going to take a, some time to really build this to the point that it needs to be, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if there's any hope for a short-term fix, it'll it'll you know <laughs> potentially come through uh, the transfer wire, potentially a grad transfer. Because the one thing this team absolutely needs to figure out before next season is shooting. I mean, that's the one yeah. thing that could mask a lot of the flaws and, and could just obviously uh, you know be be a, a band aid to to you know building that culture, building that stuff that is actually you know going to take years and years to do. Recruiting class after recruiting class and getting older and older and doing those things that you really need to do to really sustain a program at this day in this day and age. Uh, you know, it was funny. Obviously, I thought today was you know one final example of uh, of just you know some of Indiana's biggest shortcomings, where it is, where it needs to go. Obviously, shooting was a big part of that. And inside of that, I also thought that it's just um, you know this was such a season where. Uh, a shot here, a shot here, you know, a, a made shot, whether it was the Butler game and Rob Finnessy, uh, you know, saving what was an otherwise pretty ugly performance. Uh, you know, you look at some of the other games where you know, teams like you know, Jordan Bohanna was nailing shots you know, like here in Iowa City, CJ Jackson, a big shot, Ryan Klein, you know, big shots on either end. You know, today you had, you know, they, they cut the lead or cut their deficit to, to one point twice in the second half. Uh, Devontae Green uh, drains a three, lands on his bottom, uh, has a chance to go tie the game at the line, and uh, can't hit his free throw. Would have tied the game on the next end. Uh, on the other end, Wichita State go de- goes down, hits a three. Two minutes later, it's a seven-point game. Uh, just so many little moments in this season that just really separated this team from really uh, ever really being very good. Um, you know, I-, I thought this team had potential. It certainly had talent, but obviously, when you when you factor in the injuries, definitely part of it. But also, I just thought that it never really sees the little moments that really make a team good. Yeah, yeah. And I think what you have to hope is that this team learned in the latter half of this season how to compete in games basically and then you hope that they add some pieces that can maybe shoot and then you hope that the pieces that already existed because I think Rob Fennessy was somewhere around a 30 31 percent three-point shooter this year I think he's capable of better than that when you you look at his shot Um, again Al Durham was really good early in the season from three that obviously didn't sustain itself during the latter half of the season but but I think he can be a little better than what the numbers indicate once again for him, uh, you know, Devontae Green, we saw good Devontae down the, the latter half of the season. Uh, you know, I, really most of the year he was well below his career averages in terms of shooting. So, you know, he's a guy that's capable of better. Um, Justin Smith, I'm not sure how much hope there is in terms of uh, long-range shooting. Well, what yeah. he has to do is better define his role and what's a good shot for him. And where he can Start impact better, the yeah. game the most, which right now is to be a defensive stopper and a – and just eat glass basically as a rebounder, uh, and and that's part of the figuring out process for this team as well. And then you got a guy right like Race Thompson. We think maybe he has some ability to step out and, and hit some some shots from uh, you know whether it's 15 feet, 17 feet, three, whatever. We don't know. We really never saw that this season. <laughs> uh, again, Jerome Hunter's a guy that has a reputation as, mm-hmm. as a decent shooter. Can he? So you know there are some guys in house that could potentially fill that role and there's also going to have to be some guys that come from the outside that can help fill that role as well but yeah you're right I mean for for all the things we can say about this season it's amazing how a shot here or a shot there you look at some of the games that this team lost the close games including this game tonight where basically the other team's ability to make a shot here or there and it's not like Wichita State shot lights out I mean would they finish 11 of 29 or yeah, they were something from three I mean they, they weren't exactly lighting it up from three but they made enough and at crucial times yeah. that, it, that they won the game. Yep. So with that, uh, it's our final scoop talk of the year. Um, any last thoughts, anything we uh, need to touch on moving forward here? Uh, do we, uh, well, I mean, you know, the big question is what does Romeo decide to do? I think uh, there's probably a 90 plus percent chance that Romeo is going to the NBA. Yeah, but, I don't see him going uh, back. I, you know, I, I, at Could this point it would be a shock if he stayed basically. Oh, yeah. Um, and then beyond that, it's, it's just what's this roster going to look like or how many, uh, you know, I've got to believe you're looking at probably, I would say minimum two transfers off this roster probably. Is a, you know, if I was setting an over-under, I guess I'd say two. Um, That's fair. For this, for this team, uh, you know, uh, there's definitely going to be some, some roster turnover. There's, there's an, if Romeo goes pro, obviously there's an open scholarship right there. If there's a trans, one or two transfers, there's another couple open scholarships. So, you know, Armand Franklin and Trace Jackson Davis are already in the fold. You're looking at two or three more guys, probably at least. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, things are going to look very different in a few months, let alone next season, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then all the while, as you said, you had to cross your fingers and hope that, you know, if you're Archie Miller, you hope that uh, Jerome Hunter can, can get back to health and uh, be able to help you. Because right there, I mean, you're going to get a, you know, basically a top 50 type prospect. Yeah. Uh, who's, you know, obviously, you know. But he's going to be a guy coming off not playing no, in a game for a year. He's basically so. atrophied uh, from a physical standpoint, yeah. just not being able to being able to work at the, at the level he needs to actually be a contributor right now. So, you know, he's got to regain all that in the offseason, you know, assuming that all the health things check out and he's able to do that. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, people have asked, you know, is this team going to be any better next season? Well, uh, my pretty consistent answer has been, I, I don't think they're going to lose 12 of 12 or 13 games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I still think it's going to be a team that's going to have to scratch and claw and really figure things out uh, to have a chance to make the tournament next year. I don't think that's a, a sure thing with the, the group that looks to be coming back on paper right now or looks to be coming in, uh, into focus next year. I mean, obviously, like you said, it's really hard to uh, make a, a hard and fast judgment on next year just because I, I do think there are going to be uh, some uh, departures and additions. And, you know, once we really get the lay of the land and figure out who's staying, who's, who's leaving, uh, who's coming, um, you know, we'll have a better idea. But um, it's uh, it's going to be a, a crucial, crucial year uh, just from a, uh, you know, a culture standpoint, I think, because while the results may not be, uh, you know, as lofty and as grand as I think folks would want them to be at this point, especially after missing the NCAA tournament for three years, um, they got to be able to show some progress. Next year's a huge progress year, whether or not it's the NCAA tournament. Uh, they just need to show progress within the season, within the development, within the system. Uh, they got to be better offensively. I mean, this was just not a very convincing season from this coaching staff, from this player, from this group. Uh, they got to be better on that end. Defensively, uh, you got to like what they're doing. But again, you, they got to show they got to show some real progress next year in a lot of different ways. Yeah, consistency. Yeah, I mean, consistency is the key word. Uh, this season, you know, you ask, what well, can they be better? Well, better than what? Better than the twelve and two start? Better than the one and twelve stretch yeah. in the middle, or better than the six and two finish to the season? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so. the, the the answer to that is consistency. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe the the high is not as high, but how about the lows not be as low? And I think that's a, a first step in the right direction. We'll see. So, thanks for uh, sticking with us all year. For one final time, for Jeremy Price, Mike Miller. See you later. Sorry, I don't know why I did that. <laughs>